Well, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I, amen. Give me a good amen. 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 I want to say this. God is just on the move. I am surrounded by people that just seem to have breakthroughs all around. So if you're waiting for yours, um, maybe this morning is being at the right place at the right time because God is doing breakthroughs all around us. So I am excited to ask you to stand up. Let them throw the scripture on the, on the, on the wall here. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says this, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If you are tired of waiting, then you need to wait differently. When it says those who wait on the word, the, the word wait there is a word that's connected to binding. It's this, this idea of, of ready and, and you know ready to spring, ready to go. That you're waiting with expectation, not just waiting, but you're waiting, you're ready. And those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There is strength that God is renewing to you even in this morning, even in the worship, even in the message. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. That is big wings. That is high flying. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yesterday, I walked 10 kilometers on my treadmill. Yes. And I didn't faint. But I was tired after the first kilometer. And I kept knowing, I can make this. I will make this. I will make this. There's a journey. Some of you have been walking for 10 years. And you're waiting. Let God renew your strength. I want to just pray that as a promise and then just allow the team to, to lead us into a time of praise and worship, shall we? Rappelang. Lord, in the name of Jesus, your strength be upon us. We are waiting on you. We are waiting for your move. And we will not faint. We will not grow weary because we are waiting on the Lord. And we are mounting up even as we open our mouths to sing. We will run with these songs. We will not grow weary. We will not faint. We declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, lead us in victory. Hallelujah. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me.
the splendor of our King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, oh see how great, how great is our God. seen a glimpse of your heart a billion years still I'll be singing how can I praise you enough how can I praise you enough you 
are the Lord Almighty, outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean. Whoa, nothing else compares. Creation calls all to the Savior. sky no one is higher our God of wonders you reign our God of wonders you reign you are the Lord Almighty outshining all the stars in glory your love is like the wild ocean Whoa, nothing else compares You are the Lord Almighty Outshining all the stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean Whoa, nothing else compares
As we just are in God's presence, just close your eyes for a moment. If you've not been born again, that means you realized you were a sinner and you needed a Savior and you've not received Him yet as your Savior. Won't you for a moment just raise your hand? If there's any doubt in your heart, perhaps you're on Facebook but I really sense strongly, is there anybody? Just raise your hand as you are. Say, Lord, I'm not sure. I need to set my case right with the Lord. I want to ask one more time. If you're there, if you're on Facebook, just pray this. Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I know that you're the only name that was given under heaven by which I can be saved. I want to receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Savior. And now I invite you, Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Make you my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. Thank you, Father. If you've prayed that prayer, you've just been born again into God's kingdom. Thank you, Father. And if you're here this morning and you've prayed that prayer for the first time, I'd like to meet you afterwards. I really sense there are two people here. God's got an appointment with you today. The Lord bless you. Take a moment and love the people around you. Introduce yourself. Hug somebody. Thank you to the worship team. It's wonderful to see people take time just to introduce themselves to each other. In that sense, we're a family. It's great to see you this morning. So welcome. I trust the Word's going to bless you and that you will be strengthened and built up and challenged. 
Thank you for your commitment in giving to the Lord that enables us to do what God's called us to do. I want to read a scripture out of Paul's writing to the church in Philippi, Philippians 4.19. They supplied in the need that Paul had. And then he says, and my God, you see, you have to make him your God. He's not just everybody's God. To them that received him, to them gave you the right to become children of God. And my God shall supply all your needs. We have needs. And sometimes we need to assess whether we're living by our desires and we're living by our covetousness. And covetousness is idolatry. So he says, I will supply your needs. And you can trust him for that. According to his riches, which is unlimited, in glory, in God's opinion of you in Christ Jesus. Again, he uses their hypostatic union, which means you've responded by giving, so God responds to you. Let's just close our eyes. Father, thank you for a giving congregation. We receive the seed. And Lord, thank you that you will provide everyone's need according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And as they give, Lord, we place that seed at your feet. And thank you for multiplication. Thank you for provision in Jesus' name. And if you agree, just say amen. Wonderful. The ashes can stand up. If you're visiting with us this morning for the first time, why don't you just raise your hand if you haven't been with us before. I know it's long weekend. Um, if there anybody I can't see here, welcome. Welcome at the back there. And uh, they'll give you a little card to fill in, and then you just get a visitor's pack at the desk. The ashes can take up the offering. As they take up the offering, I've just got a couple of announcements. Uh, Anthony will be ministering tonight, and uh, you're welcome to come and enjoy the service with perhaps a younger group of people. And then on the 24th of August, we have our Holy Spirit Weekend. And you're invited. There's a charge involved because there's a meal involved. And come and enjoy that with us. We're really experiencing a wonderful intervention by the person of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you. And uh, as they're still taking up the offering, I'm going to ask Anthony to come to the stage. As he comes, he's here with his beautiful wife. Chantel, if she'll just stand up, that's his wife. His child has gone with grandparents. And uh, we've come a long road with Anthony. And uh, I appreciate him as a man called of God with an anointing upon his life. And uh, he'll challenge you this morning. We had a wonderful first service. And <laughs> um, if he challenges you, you know, the word either makes you mad, glad, or sad. So I'm trusting that it will make you glad. As they're still taking up the offering, I just want you to know that whenever a person comes to minister, you and I have to receive from that person. We're different personalities. And I can't be Anthony. I can't be Chuck. I'd be a second-hand person. And so would you. You're an original. You can only be who God's made you to be. And when we are whom God has made us to be, that gives God tremendous pleasure because he sees the instrument he built for a specific purpose and call, fulfilling that purpose and call. So let's just stand together. Sorry, they're still taking up the offering. Uh, why I'm letting you stand is you need to receive when we welcome the prophet, we receive the prophet's reward. I've always battled while they're still just busy. In, in Durban, in Bible college, the guys would come and say, yuck, that guy was boring. I said, did you hear what that person said? You see, you depend, uh, it, it depends on you whether you're open to receive because you have a certain picture of how a person should be and this morning, Anthony will climb out of that box. So let's just extend our hands to him. Say, Father, we receive your servant. We receive the word he has for us. We open our hearts 
to be challenged, to be changed, and to become doers of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give somebody a high five and say, I meant that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, it's so wonderful to be here this morning. Thank you so much, Neville, for uh, allowing me to, to be here this morning. It's a privilege to be here with my wife as well. Unfortunately, other times she, she can't travel with me. But this time, it was, I said it was long weekend, and it's Women's Day. So I was a good husband. And I booked her a ticket to come with me this weekend. So I got a lot of brownie points. So husbands, take note. This is how you score brownie points, Amen. And in the first service, my mother-in-law and father-in-law was also here. So I just loved them, you know. I got so many brownie points for the next two years. I'm in such a green place. It's wonderful. So it's great to be here, Neville, and to the leadership of this church, to you and Rina. Thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. I love being here at Leaven of Word, Living Word. It's great to be part of the family as well. And we are from Amamsam Toti, so it's nice to be here in Pretoria. I want to talk to you this morning about the impact of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit impact, whichever way you like. Both of them will, will reach you this morning, and I'm glad that you are here. And if you are here this morning, don't you just quickly want to take your Bible or your neighbor's Bible if you didn't bring your Bible? Amen. Just take your Bible. Some of us are very clever nowadays. We have electronic Bibles. That's also a Bible. All right. I've got so many versions of the Bible in here. It just ain't funny. So take your Bible and just say, this is my Bible. Say, I love my Bible. I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Now, how many of you would love to know what you can do? Five of you, praise God. The other ones, I'm going to tell you what you can do, what the Word of God says you can do. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for your Word. We pray that you'll bless your Word into the lives of your beautiful people, Father. And as we're going to minister this Word, Lord, we know it's your Word that changes lives. We know it's the anointing that changes lives. And we pray this morning for the Word of God and the anointing in the presence of the Holy Spirit to be here to change the hearts of people that we will go out and make an impact in people's lives. So, Father, we pray that your presence will be here. Allow the Word of God to change hearts and minds and the way we think and philosophies and theologies, Father, and that we will take the word with the Spirit of God and truly just change our lives, but also the people around us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So before I can speak to you about the Holy Spirit impact, I need to maybe just clarify the word impact first. And if you take a look at the word impact, the noun uh, of the word impact says it's the action of one object coming forcibly into uh, another. Now, how many of you have ever been in an unfortunate situation where somebody drove into your car? Okay. How many of you have experienced an accident like that? How many of you were very fruity? In other words, the fruit of the Spirit was evident in your life when that happened. Good for you, sir. Good for you. I'm very proud of you. I will give you a high five after this service. Uh, but, but usually when somebody bumps into you, you know, Galatians 5 is so beautiful. Verse 22 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. But just a few verses before that, it talks about the flesh. Amen. And a, a, a few months ago, uh, we, we bought this beautiful vehicle for my wife, and this is her number plate, Shanti ZN, and she, she was driving around in a new car, and it was during uh, June, around June, uh, we had some services, and Stephen Clarsons was there with the services, so we took him out for lunch after our service, and my wife was driving in her car, I was driving in my car, and on the way out, my wife went before me, and then there came a car in between us, and out on the way out of the mall, my wife stopped because she had to stop there, and then there was cars that were coming, and uh, before she could go, the gentleman between the two of us decided it's, he looked, and he went, and bam, he bumped into my wife's car. But I looked at this, and I just saw the scene playing off in front of me, and I thought, what is my wife doing with her car? Because it went like this, and I thought, but it's an automatic, you know, surely she cannot, you know, do that to an automatic car. 
And then I realized, okay, the guy behind her bumped into her. And obviously, being a good husband, I swerved in front and I jumped out of the car, you know, trying to sort out the situation. You know, as we as men do. Mm, thank you, sir, for your honesty. Because that's what we do. I, I went to my wife. I said, are you okay? She said, yes. She was very calm in the car. And I jumped out. And the, a guy in the other car jumped out. I wasn't even the one that was bumped. But I jumped out. And then when I jumped out, I realized, oh, I've got the guest speaker in my car. <laughs> we just came from church, two services. I am the pastor. I will have to now act like a pastor. So before I could say words of how I felt about this guy driving into the back of my wife's car, I said, are you okay? <laughs> and I looked at his car, and I saw his car also had quite a dent. Now, that dent uh, is the back of the car, it's the bumper. It's not that hectic, but the impact of that little bump, you know, was such an impact that for weeks now, we've been feeling the impact of that bump. The insurance felt it. We had to pay an access. We, we felt that. Uh, this guy did not have insurance, so we felt that. It was not his car. It was his father's car, so we felt that. So for weeks now, a small little bump had a major impact on our family. Shame. Even on his life. He phoned me, said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. You know, we'll make plans to pay it off. I said, relax, relax. It's okay. That's why we've got insurance. We'll sort it out. His father phoned me and said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I said, relax. It was just a little bump that cost us a lot of money. Oh, well, the insurance, a lot of money. Uh, and then when I looked at this, you know, the inconvenience of the time that went by, you know, it was the action of one object coming forcibly into contact with another. It was not a nice experience. And I took my hats off to my wife for being so calm and collective and operating in the fruit of the Spirit. You know, it was so beautiful. Even uh, Stephen looked at my wife and he says, Oh, you are so great. You're so wonderful. I thought, what about me? I'm the pastor, yeah? Really? Uh, 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 and he went to her and, and she really, you know, uh, showed the fruit of the Spirit. But that at such an impact, our little girl, shame, when she saw this, she heard about the, the accident. She's, oh, is the car going to be okay? Will they be able to fix it? Don't worry, my darling. It's just a bumper. They take that off. They put on a new bumper. No problem. So, so that impact was felt. It's not nice, but that's the word impact. It has an effect. The second uh, uh, explanation for the word impact is it's a marked effect or an influence. Now, I like this mark effect. If you look at the picture there, you'll see somebody is busy dying something. Now, in, in the olden days and even in the book of Acts, uh, they were used to this terminology that when they had to change the coloring of clothing, they had to dye it. And that's why when they heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it wasn't something new because the concept of being baptized with the Holy Spirit, the substance of something Changing or having an impact on your life and influencing other people was not something new because they were used to dyeing clothes in those days. Now, you can look at this shirt and say it's a white shirt, but if you want this shirt to be blue, what do you have to do? You have to make sure that it gets into contact with something, number one, forcibly, but that there will be a marked effect on the shirt. So I can walk around here in church all day and look at this shirt and say, blue. Blue. Even though we are in Blue Bulls town, I can even say, blue bulls, blue. It will not happen. This thing will remain blue. It has to come in contact with another substance that has the blue in it. So if I take this shirt and I, or red or whatever color, I think this is a red color, or I'm not sure what color this is. We'll find that very soon. It looks very dark. So I thought it was blue. It's not. It's red. I think. We'll find out very, very soon, or purple, or something like that. But how many of you know that this white shirt, the more I do this, 
The more it gets into contact with the substance that's inside you, the dye, the t-shirt's color will change. How many of you know there's an effect on this t-shirt? How many of you know that this t-shirt is slowly but surely starting to change color? Can you guess what the color is, please? My wife, what color is this going to be? We'll see later on. I think it's red or purple or pink. One of those. But to have an impact means you have to get in contact with something. You see, and in the church world, it's exactly the same. I like this quote. This quote says that God is not interested in a merger. God is interested in a complete takeover. And we as Christians, we are so used to the concept of merger that we will say to God, you see, this morning I'm going to challenge you on the following. Are you making an impact in your world? Are you changing the community that you live in? Are you changing your workplace? Are you changing the universities that you go to? Are you changing your schools? Are you having an effect because you are there? But you see, if we are just going to go for a merger, because this t-shirt currently is a merger. It's not a complete takeover. God wants a complete takeover. You see, that's what we do. We say, God, you can take these areas of my life. But please leave that alone. I'm okay. God, you can, you can even, uh, yeah, yo, Lord, this is difficult. Lord, those areas that you're touching now, uh, I still wanted to, you know, have control over those areas. And then God says, no, 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 you have allowed me there, so I will make an impact uh, in your life there. And then you say, but God, why are you not using me? Why am I not making an impact in the world? Why are you not changing my situation? But you are so busy with a merger. And God says, I'm not interested in a merger. I'm interested in a complete complete takeover. How many of you know that if I keep putting this t-shirt, and this one is tough, eh? This one does not want to allow the dye to get in there. Maybe it's one of you here this morning. You, you know, you, you say, God, oh Lord, I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all to you, my blessed Savior. But some areas of your life are like, uh-uh. Uh-uh, Lord, no, no, no. I want to make an impact. Uh-uh, uh-uh, Lord, leave that area alone. I still want to do that. Look, I've given you at least 90%, Lord. That's a lot. You know, God, that's a lot. God says you want to make an impact with just 90%? I am not interested in a merger, my son. I'm interested in a complete takeover. And sometimes when this happens, it's ouch. It's aina. It's not nice. It's ouch. It's Lord. But what about that area? Okay, God, I've given you everything now. Come on, Lord. Let me just keep this little piece. Now, how many of you know that if I dye this t-shirt, those white spots there are going to stay, then it's not going to look nice because it's not going, getting into the substance. You see, God says, this morning, I'm interested in a complete take over. You see, you want to make an impact. I'm going to let it lie there for a while. You want to make an impact in people's lives? But first, you need to be impacted yourself by the Holy Spirit. Stop compromising with the Holy Spirit. Stop being in mergers with the Holy Spirit. He's not interested in a merger. He wants a complete takeover this morning. How many of you are ready for a complete takeover? Now, if you've got your Bible open now, go to the book of Acts chapter number 3 from verse 1 to verse 10. I'm going to read this story to you. It's a well-known story. So many guys have preached on this. Uh, there's most probably, I don't know, thousands of sermons on just this uh, passage in Scripture. Acts chapter number 3. You see, you need to get into the substance. You need to make sure that there's a complete takeover happening place. Now, look at this now. This is a good takeover. But let's, let's keep it there for a little bit longer. Let's see what happens if I continue to leave this in the substance. Now, Acts chapter number three is the chapter after Acts chapter number two. Do you agree with me? One, two, three. Amen. You agree with me? So Acts three, we're going to read about two men that were part of the Acts two people that were in the upper room, that had a complete takeover experience on the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit got a hold of them in the upper room, where there was no more mergers, but complete takeovers. 
They were waiting in the upper room, and they were praying. You see, Jesus died. People were worried. The disciples were worried. The apostles were worried. Jesus got buried. Jesus rose from the grave, and they were excited. But Jesus says, go and wait, because, you know, they wanted to kill all the people around, those who followed Jesus, and they were waiting in the upper room. They were just happy to wait in the upper room, because they were maybe afraid of dying if they went out of the upper room. So they spent time in the upper room, day one, day two, day three, and then we read that something happened on the day of Pentecost. And then after that happened, now read to these, uh, Acts chapter number three, verse one to 10, these verses that I quickly want to read to you. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. So this was after the uh, uh, Pentecost experience, they went to the temple to go pray. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. Say beautiful. Where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Now I don't have time to, to show you an illustration on this. If I had, I would have had somebody that was the lame guy and his two friends that pick him up and carry him to the temple gate and put him down here because this is the temple gate called Beautiful and put him down. And then at night they would walk or a day they would walk back, do their own thing. At night they will come there, oh, nothing happened to this poor guy. Shame, let's pick him up again. Let's take him to his house. Take him to his house. Let him sleep. Next morning, these two friends were good friends. Got there, picked him up again. The Bible doesn't say how many days they carried him to the gate called Beautiful. But at least he had some friends. You need friends like that in your life. Those who will carry you. Those who will be there for you. This guy had these friends. They carried him up and down. And while he was sitting there, he was most probably expecting something to happen to him. Verse 3 says, When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. You see, I believe that this man eventually, after a while, realized that none of these guys understand that I'm being put at this temple, not for money, but because I want to walk. Because my need is different. But because people felt sorry for him, and in those days people had sat there, were beggars, so all they could do is at least give him some money. So he was probably so used to people walking past him, giving him money, going into the temple, hallelujah, praying in the temple, while this poor man is sitting outside, not having any impact on him. Hello, church. Sometimes we in the church, we are praying, and we're all holy, and everything is wonderful, but there are so much need right around the church. People are sitting, and they are begging, and they are wanting somebody to just stand still, like a Peter and a John. Listen to this. And Peter and John, they, uh, they stopped there, and then he asked them for money. Verse 4 says, Peter looked straight at him as the John. Then Peter said the following. He said, look at us. I like this. When I read this for the first time, I've never, when I read this passage and I've preached on this a lot of times, I never saw this part. He says, look at us. Verse 5 says, so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something. Church, uh, the people at your work, the people at your school, the people in your neighborhood, are you walking around and saying to them, look at me. Look at me. And if they ask you why, then you say, because I've got something to give you. I've got the answers to your problems. I have the one inside me that knows everything, and I can help you. Look at me. I think the problem today is that when we walk into our workplaces, when we go into our universities, when we go into our neighbors' uh, uh, houses and into our neighborhoods, we are not standing still. And when people look at us, they don't see. They don't see what we have. They don't see what we have. But this man, when they stopped and they said, look at us, they gave. He gave them his attention. He was so excited because the first time somebody actually stopped. Somebody actually looked him in the face. Somebody was willing to speak to him. All the other people. I think most probably, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this in my mind, I, I can see the picture, how he's there at that gate called Beautiful, and all these people going to pray, all the religious people, when they saw this man, they all of a sudden walked a different route to a different entrance of the temple because they didn't want to walk past that man. But Peter and John, they said, no, 
No, we are going to stand still. We had an upper room experience. And when they looked at this man, they commanded his attention. They said, look at us. Now, you might think that's arrogant this morning. You might say, but that's arrogance. It's not arrogance. You've got something this morning, church. You've got something to give. And, and it's wonderful that you're asking me what? Verse 6. Then Peter said, and I like this. This guy is so excited. He, the people are standing still. At least if they cannot help him because nobody else could help him. Maybe they have lots of money. Maybe they have so much money. Maybe they can help him in, in some kind of a way. But Peter immediately said to him, he said, hey, silver or gold I do not have. <laughs> can you imagine this poor guy's face? Look at us. Silver and gold we do not have. At least. These other guys gave me 5 cent, 10 cent, 50 cent, 1 rand, 2 rand, maybe 10 rand if I'm lucky. They gave me something. You say you don't have silver or gold, so why are you standing here? <laughs> why are you demanding my attention if you don't have anything to give? Silver or gold I do not have, but, <laughs> I always say when you read the word but, it cancels everything else out before that. But. What we have, what we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Can you imagine this guy's face? You don't have silver or gold, but can you imagine it? Come on, church, you have to see this man. He's a beggar. Come on, look at us. Silver or gold we do not have, but can you see I'm so excited they've got something. What we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up, get up and walk. <laughs> You've got something to give, church. And I'm going to get to that a little bit later. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. Now, I, I don't want to go into this, and I can, I can spend lots of time just on that. But isn't it, they already commanded him to get up. Why didn't he jump up? They already commanded him. They said, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Why didn't he jump up? Sometimes you and I need to get our hands dirty. Sometimes God wants you to get in there and do something. He took him by the right hand. He plucked him up. And this guy started to run. This guy started to jump. The Bible says, and he praised God. He went into the temple. He's not allowed to go into the temple. He's actually not allowed to go into this temple. But he jumped up. He ran into this temple. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And, not but, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. They were filled. You know, is your neighbor still filled with wonder and amazement? Are those people at the, at the office, are they still filled with wonder and amazement when you walk in there and say, look at me, look at me, why must I look at you? Because I've got something to give, I've got something to give. When you're in a difficult situation, do people come to you because you've got something to give? You see, church, what do you have? This is my question to you this morning. What do you have? If people come to you and they say, I've got this situation, do you have something to give to them? Or are you saying, no, 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 I'll refer them to our pastor. There at Living Word, there's an awesome pastor. His name is Neville Norden. He really hears from the Lord. Refer to Neville. Refer to Neville. No, you, we're not in the referral business or to Chuck or to whoever. Let's refer to the prophets. You see, God is calling you and I to make a difference in the people around us. We have something to give. Look at us. Look at us, they said, because we have. What do you have this morning, church? I'm glad you're asking the questions because I'm going to answer them. How many of you would like to know what you've got? Okay, seven of you. We're going from five to seven. We'll get to ten just now. The first thing you have is prayer. Now I don't hear any amens. The first thing you have is prayer. 
You see, when they were in the upper room in the book of Acts chapter number 2, when they were there, they spent time together. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 1 verse 13, uh, 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 arriving there, they went into a large second floor room to pray. Those present were Peter and John, the ones that I just spoke about now. Peter and John, all of them were united in prayer, gripped with one passion, interceding day and night. So they were praying. So when they walked out and they faced this beggar at the gate called Beautiful, they didn't do it in their own strength. They at least had prayer. You have prayer this morning. You have prayer this morning. And we're going to quickly do an exercise this morning. You see, because if you cannot pray here, how are you going to pray for somebody at your workplace? How are you going to pray for somebody that comes to you and says, I've got a problem. Let me just pray for you. So we're going to do it quickly this morning. Don't you want to stand with me, please? Just stand with me. Church, we've got prayer. Do you know how powerful prayer is? How many of you walked in here this morning, and, and, and when you drove to church, you realized you've got a need? Can I see your hand? Don't be shy. If there's a situation in your life that you trust in God for an answer, can I see your hand? Did you know that by praying for one another this morning, God can answer you? You see, we want to wait for the prophets, and there's nothing wrong with that. We want to wait for the apostles. We want to wait for the pastors. You know. But did you know that the body of Christ, the same prayer that I pray for you is the prayer that the brother next to you or the sister next to you can also pray for you. So we're going to quickly do that this morning. Oh, you see, now some of you are ready at this T-shirt. You see, this is where the T-shirt comes in. Some of you have some white spots still. Get rid of it, my brother. Get rid of it, my sister. You see, you cannot. This T-shirt is starting to get so soaked in the substance that there's no more room for anything else. So this morning, I'm going to challenge you. There's going to be no pianos playing. There's going to be no whatever, Bethel music or whatever music that you listen to. It's just going to be you going to a brother or sister, and that's all you're going to say is, can I pray for you? And they say, yes, what can I pray for? Well, let's pray for healing. Let's pray for provision. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for amen. Is that okay? Can we do that quickly for a few seconds? Let's do that, church. Go to one another. Don't be shy. If you're too shy to pray, just say, in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs your prayer this morning. Somebody needs your prayer this morning. Somebody wants you to pray with them this morning. If there are people watching via Facebook and you need prayer this morning, I want to stand in agreement with you in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what your situation, no matter what it might be, financially, emotionally, in your family, if it's healing, I pray with you right now. I stand in agreement with you right now that the God Almighty, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come, that He will grant you favor, that He will share with you His mercies and His grace and His loving kindness. I speak healing and prosperity into your life right now. I speak provision right now. I speak forgiveness right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you be touched right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, as we are praying for one another, Father God, I pray that the prayers that go up into this place, Father God, this morning, prayers that go up to the throne room of God, Lord, will be answered in Jesus' name. You say that your ear is not death. Your uh, arm is not too short to help, Father. If we call upon your name, you will answer. If we ask, we will receive, Father. So we come to you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that we can pray for one another. Thank you that there's prayer, Lord, a spirit of prayer in this place this morning, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for a spirit of prayer, Lord. Thank you that we have prayer. Thank you that we can pray for one another. If somebody finished praying for you, you're welcome to take your seats. But we're going to continue to pray for people in this place. Thank you, Lord. As God leads you to somebody, just pray for them, stand in agreement with them. In Jesus' name. If somebody prayed for you already and you find you, welcome to take your seat. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Father. As people are still praying one for another, Lord, I thank you for breakthrough. Even in this morning, oh God, that there will be breakthrough. Even in this morning, oh God, when people walk out of this place. Why? Because we've got something to give, oh God. We've got something because we were impacted by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit is here this morning, oh God, to change and transform people's lives right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. 
as we all agree in this place, Lord, as we've prayed for one another, as some people are still praying for one another, your word says amen, says yes and amen. It will be like this, Father. We will agree together right now in unity, Father God, as the church, that it will be done in Jesus' mighty name. And if you agree with me, say amen. Amen, amen in Jesus' name. So we have prayer, amen. But we also have power. <laughs> we have power. Power. Acts 1 verse 8 says this. You will receive. No church. You will receive. The Greek word for the word power there is the word dunamis. Look at your neighbor and say dunamis. Dunamis comes from that word called dynamite. Now I promise you. I wanted to. They, they, they prepared a few props for me and they asked me if they can get me another prop. I like preaching with props. I wanted to get some dynamite. Real dynamite. And then I just wanted to pick up the dynamite, Neville, and then see who will remain seated. Especially if I take out a lighter and I do this, and I bring the two closer to one another. I promise you, you will not sit here. I promise you, you will run. But church, why then? Are we so attacked by the enemy? Why then are we not saying to the devil, I have got power, the power of the Holy Spirit in me, the dunamis power. You know why? Because we are walking around, not with dynamite, we are walking around with these candles that we put on our, our cakes when it's our birthday. And then the devil comes and we say, shoo, 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 shoo. And we try to chase him away with this little candle. Come on, church. It doesn't say you've got a birthday candle. It says you've got some dynamite. Even those candles that you put on, when you blow, it still burns. It still burns. It still burns. Have you ever had those? I don't like those. I want to blow and it's out. But at least it goes, goes, goes until it goes into the cake and it dies. But dynamite, let me tell you something. When there's sickness in, the, in your body, when the devil tries to attack you in your finances, you take out the dynamite. You take out the dynamite and you say, devil, I have received power. Power. You see, uh, there used to be a lady that sang a song. How many of you know Tina Turner? I'm giving my age away now but I used to listen to her music. And then that lady will come on stage and she will take those high notes and she would sing this song. I've got the power! <laughs> Hello? Yeah, she sang like that. Those younger generation guys. I've got the power! You know, I like that. She lie. We've got the power. We've got the dunamis power inside us, church. So don't let the enemy try to tell you that you do not have power this morning. You have power. And because you have power, the next one is also evident in your life. It's called boldness. Some of you are sitting here and saying, what on earth did Neville do? Who's this guy on stage? He's crazy. Must he shout like that? Must he run around and walk around? Yes, because I've got some boldness in me. Acts 4 verse 31 says, after they prayed, they prayed. The place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God. Oh, you know what, my brother? I just quickly want to share a scripture with you, you know, my brother. But, but don't take offense now, you know. I, I just quickly, you know, it's not me. It's the Bible, my brother. You know, let me just quickly share that. You know, I'm so sorry to, to do this to you now, but my brother, I just quickly. No, man. You've got a boldness, church. Proverbs 28 verse 1, and I love this. It says, the wicked are edgy with guilt, ready to run off even when nobody's chasing them. Honest people. How many of those do we have here this morning? Those who are saved. Honest people are relaxed and confident, bold as lions. How many of you have been to a zoo? Have you seen those poor lions? Oh, shame. I always feel so sorry for them. They walk around there. They don't even want to eat you. They, you know, they just look at you. Yeah, and they walk there and then they lie there. Have you seen those lions? How many of you have been to the Kruger National Park? And you drive around in your car and you see a lion coming towards you. 
Oh, the window's locked. <laughs> Put up the windows, the windows. Lock the car. You know, if you've got small little children, they'll tell, Daddy, drive faster, drive faster, drive faster. This line's coming. And the closer that line gets to a car, I've seen many videos on YouTube of lines coming to cars, and then they're up, and then they're blah. Have you seen that? You know, I don't know about you, but if a lion had to be here in front of my face, and it does that roaring thing, I will know I'm in the presence of something bold. But you know what's the problem with you and I as the church today? We get up in the morning, and we say, devil, we are ready to take on this day. The Word of God says, I'm as bold as a lion. And then you wake up in the morning, and you say, I'm ready for this day. Devil, are you ready for me? And then you wake up, and you're like, oh, I'll show the devil right now. I'll show him who I am. Devil, I'll get a hold of you. I'm as bold as a lion. And you, meow. And that's the only thing that comes out. There's no roaring. You sound like a little Mickey Mouse. Okay, that's a mouse, but you get the picture. That's how bad it sounds. See, church, the Word of God says you are as bold as a lion. We have something. That's why Peter and John could walk past this man and say, we do not have silver or gold, but we've got something. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit in us. We just came out of the prayer room. We've got some boldness. In the name of Jesus, get up. I want to say to you this morning, whatever the situation is that you're facing, I want you to look at that situation, and I want you to roar over that situation. I wanted to do this with the Afrikaans service, but then I realized, you know, we are more reserved as Afrikaans people, but with an English crowd. <laughs> Some of you need to roar over your situation this morning. Some of you need to let the devil know that this situation that you are trying to bring against me, I have got boldness in me. I'm as bold as a lion devil. You better know that there's a roar inside me. I didn't share this story with the first service, but uh, uh, two years ago, I was invited to Cape Town to a church there to go do Pentecostal services. And on the way there, I was preparing and praying. And, and when I got to the pulpit as well, uh, the Holy Spirit just said to me, roar like a lion. I said, Lord, that's a bit strange. Roar like a lion. Lord, this doesn't sound right. He says, all you do, you go up and you roar. So I went up to the pulpit. I says, the Holy Spirit says, I must roar like a lion. Roar! I said, okay, thank you for coming. God bless you. Let's continue with the word. I thought this was the weirdest thing I've ever done. Last year, they invited me back again. When they invite you back, it's not that bad. Maybe it's to say sorry, but this is now the third year, Neville, that you're inviting me back, so I don't know, we passed the sorry part now. And I got to that church, and when I greeted the lady at the reception, she said, there's a, there's a lady that works with her finances, she quickly wants to talk to you. So I went to her, and when I walked into her office, I said, yes, how are you? Well done. She says, remember last year when you were here, you roared like a lion from the stage. I'm like, oh. I knew that roar was going to bite me somewhere in the future. She says, can I share a testimony with you? I said, yes, please do. She says, last year, uh, I wanted to get my daughter to come to church. She's backslidden. She doesn't want to know anything, with, to have anything to do with God. Uh, I told her that there's this crazy guy here that's doing services. You must come. So eventually she convinced her daughter. Her daughter came to the service, and on the way to church, she said the following in her mind to God. She says, God, if you are real, let this man walk onto the stage this, this evening and roar like a lion. If he roars like a lion, I will serve you once again. Sometimes we need to do weird things. At least this is not unscriptural. The Bible says you are as bold as a lion. So somebody here this morning, I want you to close your eyes in this place. Somebody here this morning needs to roar like a lion. I don't know what your situation is. 
We've prayed for one another. But maybe there's this thing that keeps haunting you this morning. This thing needs to know that you are as bold as a lion inside you. You've got the lion of Judah. And when you roar in a few seconds, I want us to roar in this place. And I want you to roar out of the deepest of your belly this morning like you would laugh. Just sound that sound of roaring like a lion over the situation if you feel that issue. So if you're ready, church, I'm going to roll with you so that it's not that awkward. <laughs> but somebody here needs to roar over their situation. And if you're ready on the count of three, if there's something that you are facing this morning, roar over that situation. Take that boldness like this man in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. I want to say to you, roar over that situation right now on the count of three. One, two, three, Father, we thank you for every roar that went up into this place, Lord. The Lion of Judah, Father God, roaring over every situation in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We thank you that you are the Lion of Judah, Father. Thank you that we can be bold as lions. The next thing that you and I have is we have a story. We have a story. I just told you one of my stories of this roaring like a lion. You see, the Word of God says in Acts chapter number 1 verse 8, you will receive power and then you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. You know what? What do you have? You have a story to tell. I always say it's one of the most amazing things for me to spend time with Neville. I love it. When I come to Pretoria, I always just want to find time to sit with Neville. Why? Because he has so many stories to tell. And when I sit with him and I walk away, I feel so encouraged because he told me about this. And when he was there and when he experienced this, it's a story that edifies me. When I walk away, I know God can also do it for me. There are people out there that are hungry for your story this morning. They are hungry for your story this morning. After the first service, somebody came to me and this gentleman said to me, a while back, uh, you prophesied over my life, this and this and this is going to happen. He says, you won't believe it. Look at that. There's my wife. Uh, she's pregnant. <laughs> God is blessing us. I cannot have children. I've got the doctor's report that says I cannot have children. <laughs> he has a story. He has a story. He has a story. What's your story this morning? Church, you have a story to tell. Can you imagine this man, this blind man sitting at this gate called Beautiful? When Peter and John grabbed him by his hand and he jumped up, he went into this temple running. People knew he had a story. You have a story to tell, church. The next thing that you and I have is we have joy. <laughs> we have joy. It doesn't look like it this morning. I did an experiment in our car yesterday. We were visiting my parents, and then we drove back to the guest house. And on the way to the guest house, I started singing that old song. I've got joy, 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 joy in my heart. Where? Joy. Ah, there we go. Where? You see my wife singing. Where? 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 And, and, and after a while, I just quickly sang it, and I left it there in the car. My, my wife turned down the radio, and my little girl started to sing, I've got joy, 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 joy in my heart. And my wife joined in, joy, in, where, joy, where, where in my heart, where, where, where. This morning, on the way to church, guess what was the first song that we sang? I've got joy, 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 joy in church. The world out there needs to know that you've got joy. But you see, the problem is, Many of us look like this. It looks like you were issued when you came into the church with a bag of lemons. Hello? How are you, my brother? Oh, under the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. How's it going with you? It looks like when you came to church and they greeted you at the door, and I also came through the same door. Welcome to Anthony's Cooking Show here at Living Word. I'm going to explain to you all you need is one lemon. Cut it up into four halves. And if you want to see with a very sharp knife, 
If you want to see what the church should not look like, then just take this lemon, put it in your mouth, and squeeze it. I've got the joy, 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 joy. And you want people to... Thank you to the prop team for getting the most sour lemons in Pretoria. See, church, that's the sad part about the church. There's no more joy. When last did you just laugh like this and just have a good time because you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God? Whew. Sometimes this sourness lasts for a long time. Even my eyes are tearing up at this point in time. Just look at your neighbor and say, smile. The pastor will pay for the stitches. See, the Word of God says, Acts 13 verse 52, and the believers, who, how many believers do we have here this morning? We're filled with lemons. We're filled with lemon juice. We're filled with sour sweeties. You know, you get these sour worms. I love them. I, they're so sour. They make it easier. But I put them in my mouth, and I'm, then my wife says, are they nice? Yes. <laughs> and some of us as children of God look like that. But I think Peter and John, when they got out of that upper room, they were singing on the way to the temple to go pray. I've got the joy, 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 joy. In. What's your problem? In the name of Jesus. Joy. Get up. Joy. Now dance with us in the temple. I've got the joy, joy, joy. Come on. They said that they saw him running in the temple. They saw him praising God. They didn't say, and they saw him shame, still sitting there being issued with another lemon. Chuck, do you like lemons? You don't like lemons, Chuck. They're very sour. Hey, lemon. You see, we expect the church, we expect to make an impact on the church. But the problem is we're standing in front of another brother and say, oh, drink, my brother, from this joy. Get some joy. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. I know. I know. And this one really has some great juice in it. It just droop. so sour. It just drips out of you. I still love you, my brother. But we've got joy, church. Hey, hey, you've got something to smile about. The Springboks won last night. It's an amazing thing. My wife and I, we're staying at a guest house. And uh, last night, we love rugby. She is crazy, my wife, in, in the terms of when it comes to rugby. She's not typical sitting there, not understanding what's happening. Oh, they scored a try. Oh, that, is it good? Uh, <laughs> Uh, that score line there, is it for us? Or get, no, no, no. No, she's different. She goes wild. We live in a complex as well in, in the Muslim Toti, and then when we watch rugby, we have to close the doors because it sounds like we are, you know, fighting with one another <laughs> because it's, ah, yeah! or when it's bad, it's, oh, no. But last night, the game was 10 o'clock at night, and we're in a guest house, and the guest house, unfortunately, doesn't, didn't have the, the, the super sport channel. So we took our iPad, lying in bed, watching rugby. Have you ever tried to watch rugby in a guest house where the rest of the people are sleeping? And you are supposed to get very excited. You know, you can see most, I'm, I'm an introvert. <laughs> well behaved. So, so we watched the rugby game. And then when the first, when they scored first, we're like. <laughs> but when the Springboks started to play good, it's like. <laughs> I think some of us as Christians are looking like this. Oh, God just came through for you. There was a breakthrough. There's a contract that came through. You were praying about it for six months. (laughs) 
God healed your sister. Come on, church. God has filled us with joy. You've got something to celebrate. You've got something. You know how difficult it was. We won't do that again. Just keep it in. You've got joy. Second last thing that you've got, and I'm almost finished this, you've got a generous heart. God has given you a generous heart. Acts 2, and don't worry, the offering is already taken up, so don't get upset with Pastor Neville now. Acts 2, verse 44 to verse 45 says, remember, these are all things after they had an uproom experience. It says, all the believers, how many believers do we have here this morning? Were in fellowship as one body, and they shared with one another whatever they had. Yeah, it's amen or oh my. Out of generosity, they even sold their assets. They sold their cars, they sold their houses, and now the wife looks at the husband, hey, let's go home now, honey. I think we had enough of the service. To distribute the proceeds to those who were in need among them. You see, you cannot just have joy, you cannot just have the prayer and the power, but you must also have a generous heart. There's a dying world out there that are looking for people that has a generous heart. That word generosity there is the word hilaros. That means hilarious. Look at your neighbor and say hilarious. Say this pastor is trying to say that we should give hilariously. Yeah, nobody's now talking to nobody. You know why? Because when this situation occurs where we're supposed to give, and then we take our money and we say, oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to give. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Okay, yes, Lord, I will give this morning. It's not a problem. I, I'm a hilaros giver. I love giving, Lord. And then you take uh, on this 10 rand note, I've got Mandela. And then you take him in your right hand and you start squeezing this 10 rand. So tight. That poor Mandela starts to cry. There are tears running down his eyes because you are squishing this poor Mandela. And then when the offering basket or the brother or sister needs, it says, oh, God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. No, that's not hilaros. You want to know what a hilaros giver is? And sorry for the Facebook Live. I know I'm moving a lot, but it's okay. You can follow a hilaros giver is somebody that says, I understand that there's a need somewhere around here. There's a need. Somebody needs to receive this. Oh, Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait to give. I can't wait to give. Yes, Lord. Hilaros, hilaros, hilaros. Yes. Hilaros giver. Hallelujah. Let's free whoever's on the note. Set them free. Hilaros. But we squeeze and we hold on tight. You see, you've got something to give. These two men came and said, we don't have money, but we have something else. Church, you have so much to give. And it doesn't just talk about money. There. It talks about whatever you can give. Your time, your time, your gifting. Let's start giving hilariously to a world out there who needs this Jesus that you and I serve. Finally, what else do I have? I have the fire of God in me. I have the fire of God in me. All the believers, Acts chapter number 2. Verse, uh, next, next slide, please. Acts chapter number 4. Uh, Ma Matthew 3, verse 11, sorry. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone, someone is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his shoes. He will baptize you. This is Jesus with the Holy Spirit. And man, when you get baptized with fire, it means that there's no more place for you. It's only the impact of that fire, the impact of that Holy Spirit. Church, there's a world out there that needs what you've got. There are people at your workplace who are crying out for solutions. There are people at your universities or your school or even your family that says, please, please help me. 
If I had to take this t-shirt, and I promise them I won't do it, but if I had to take this t-shirt and swing it around like this, I can promise you that this die will fall on his beard, will fall on his shirt, will fall on his head. Your white, beautiful hair will become pink. There will be an effect on you. Because why? There's an impact still on this shirt of, the, of this die. And the more I put it inside here, the more the color will change. The more you will not see a white t-shirt anymore, but you will see the substance that it came into contact with. Some of you are sitting here this morning, and my, my prayer is twofold. Number one, stop negotiating with God. Stop negotiating with God and say, Lord, this area of my life, please don't touch that. Oh, I still want to be in control there. Stop negotiating. God wants a complete takeover. Number two, some of you are sitting here and there are people all over in your family that needs to be impacted. Like that car that bumped into my wife's car and made an impact that we felt for weeks. There are people that are looking for an impact of the Holy Spirit that comes through you, that comes through you. Many people are sitting at home. The fire of God is gone. There's no more fire in their lives. They're upset with the church. They're upset with Christians. They need the fire of God, but somebody needs to go. A Peter and a John knew what they had, and they could say, look at us. There are people that are looking at you, Saying, I know you've got the answer, but when are you going to come to me? When are you going to come to me? When are you going to stop and speak to me and say, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have in the name of Jesus. There are people who need you this morning. And I want to ask you to close your eyes in this place while you're sitting here this morning. Some of you that are sitting here this morning and you say, it's so true. There are some areas in my life where I have not yet allowed God to take control. I'm still in the merger business. God is not interested in a merger. God is interested in a complete takeover. And some of you are sitting here this morning, and you say, God, it's time for a complete takeover. Lord, please, take over my life. Come fill me with your Holy Spirit once again so that I can make an impact wherever I go. If you are sitting in this place this morning and you say, please pray for me. Anthony, please pray for me. I need a touch from the Holy Spirit. I need a touch from the Holy Spirit. I need to get that substance of the Holy Spirit all over me, in me, upon me, and around me so that I can go out and impact the world around you. If there are areas in your life that you say, please just pray with me. I know I need to surrender. I know I need to surrender. Just quickly raise your hand. I want to pray with you. All over there, hands going up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you see these hands, Father. You see the lives that is represented by these hands, Lord. Lord, I thank you this morning that they will walk out of this place knowing that they have something to give, that the world can look at them this morning and say, you have something. And when they go into situations, Lord, that they will be able to say, I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have surrendered my all. I have surrendered my all this morning. And I want to close the service in a few minutes' time and give over to Neville, but I just sense that there's such an anointing this morning for people to say, please, just pray with me. I need to surrender this morning. I need to surrender. I need a complete takeover. And if you want us to pray with you, even right now, come to the front. The ministry team will already be in the front. Please just come to the front right now, wherever you are. If you say, I want prayer this morning, then come. Then come this morning. We are going to pray with you. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit that He will touch you right now. In Jesus' name, don't be shy. It's okay. If you don't want to come to the front, I'm still praying for you as well. But I sense there are some people that say, I'm so desperate this morning. I don't want to let this opportunity pass by. I know I came into this service this morning. I know it's a long weekend, but I also know that God wants to touch me this morning in the name of Jesus. The ministry team is in the front here. They will already start to pray with you if you come to the front. I'm going to ask everybody to stand in this place. 
Stand with me, everybody. If you are sitting, then stand with me. I want to pray a prayer of release over you. Those who want to come to the front that want prayer right now, say, I need to surrender. Just pray with me. You are welcome. Lord, I pray a prayer of surrender in this place, Lord, that we will hand over, that we will give over, that the devil will have no more right in our lives, Father, that sin will have no more right in our lives, oh God, because we have surrendered to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We've surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Father, I also pray right now in the name of Jesus. That those of us who are here this morning, that say, God, I want to impact my community. I want to impact my society. I want to impact my neighborhood. I want to impact my family, my workplace, the school that I go to, the university that I go to, or the college that I study at. Lord, come fill me with your Holy Spirit anew this morning, oh God. Lord, I know, I've heard, I've got something to give, oh Lord. Help me, give me the boldness, oh God, to go out, Father God, with the power and the presence of God to go make a difference. That is my prayer this morning in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just before the ministry team pray, in the first service I had a very interesting vision. I saw people coming home, but a person coming home and switching on the light, but there was no power. Then they went to the power box, and the trip switch had kicked out. They put it on, kicked out again. Somewhere there was a short and somewhere, sometimes there's a short. You haven't even got hands. And then I saw Paul and Silas in prison. They were bound up in Philippi. They didn't have hands. They couldn't switch on the switch. So I said, Lord, how do you switch on the switch? They began to praise God. They began to pray and to praise God. And heaven switched on the switch. God shook the earth with the earthquake and all the people that were bound, the chains fell off of them. The, uh, wherever they were caught up, the doors of the prison opened. So don't say, I can't. You can praise God. Start praying and praising. Watch God shake the situation. Let's just lift our hands as we're going to close the service. I just want you to see that there's a God who wants to respond. As you stretch out your whole being to him, Lord, I need you to take over. And Father, that's my prayer. Just declare this with me. Lord, I want to heal to a complete takeover. You paid a complete price. You allowed the cross to take over all my sin. Therefore, I declare you take over in my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. He'll be ministering tonight. Um, come. I know it's been a long weekend, but come along. I like that. What we normally do is we take up a love offering at the door for our guests as the Lord lays on your heart. The Lord bless you.